My topic is empyema thoracis. In day to day practice, we all come across with this disease. We are fortunate enough that Dr. Professor Samaria sir already has delivered a lot many things on this empyema and pleural effusion. My title is Lack of Awareness Results in Prolonged Clinical Course and Complication. I have taken this title from this very famous article published in Canadian Journal of Surgery <coughs> in 2001 where the authors have first time hypothesized that empyema is due to the lack of awareness, lack of human or human knowledge or you can say that we clinicians or we surgeons or we physicians are responsible for this thing. This is the first time they hypothesized. The objective was to assess the hypothesis of empyema thoracis is a problem of a not optimally treated. Long delays in diagnosis are common. Long hospital stays are typical and recovery with surgery is relatively rapid. Means in time referral is very important. To summarize is the conclusions were and all lines are the take home messages that early suspicion of empyema thoracis facilitates its treatment resulting in fewer investigation and shorter hospital stays means you could, may not be indulging in different type of investigation or day to day investigation or repeated investigation another conclusion is very important that when percutaneous drainage does not eliminate pleural effusions <coughs> empyema must be considered if thoracentesis fails to drain completely, repeat tap should not be done. Repeat tap should not be performed, but rather further imaging by CT should be done to better visualize the thoracic cavity first and then allow another treatment or another mode of treatment. Recovery from surgical decortication is rapid in comparison with the typical protracted pre-operative hospital course, mainly the med based on medicines. Early chief test, test tube placement is important to establish a route of drainage. It is one of the principles of treatment of empyma, but it is often not a definitive measure. Mode of treatment, something Dr. Bilal has already shown you in detail. The thoracoscopic management has been promoted as a successful non-invasive treatment, but for an early stage only. Chronic disease, <laughs> chronic organized empyema, these are unsuitable for thoracoscopic approach because of the P you will be able to see in next talk with Professor Arvind Kumar why I am saying this that chronic organized empyema thoracis where the pleural peel is more than one inch. These are unsuitable for thoracoscopic approach. We cannot do anything good for patient by just putting three hole surgery. Early surgical intervention is the optimum management for multi operated empyma. And lastly, wonder conclusion is death rate, that is the mortality rate for any study is death rate for surgical patient was 11% for those never referred to surgery unit is 25% and those who declined surgery was 50%. This is the scene on adult cases. Since some pediatricians are there, pediatric surgeons are there. Another extreme of age where the empyma is troublesome disease is, I'm just going to present this. It is the talk by the Indian Association of Pediatric Surgeons, a few eminent pediatric surgeons published in General Indian Association Pediatric Surgery in 2005 where they have concluded two, three more points particularly in concern with pediatric patients that antibiotic alone or its combination with repeated needle aspirations are highly unsatisfactory in the management of empyema thoracis particularly in terms of pediatric patients. Again, the golden rule, ICD is unquestionably the choice of management in early stages of empyma. Non-expansion, this is the other take home message that if you put ICD and if you don't get chest expansion on chest x-ray after 72 hours, means there is something 
and this indicates underlying plural technique. Although ICD may provide symptomatic relief, this is the conclusion. All ICD may provide symptomatic relief in advanced stages, but such patients silently suffer restrictive lung diseases and abnormal respiratory, which physicians get in due course of time. It is not justified to postpone surgery on the pretext that the patient is asymptomatic, means symptom is not necessary or symptom is not a clear cut indication. Asymptomatic is not just to exclusion of surgery. Because the encasement of lung is paradoxically more severe in patients with fewer symptoms and those who appear less sick. Lastly, this very important point in pediatric patients, the early decortication is strongly recommended. Why? I am just saying because lung encased in thickened pleura cannot be expected to grow normally, which in fact continues to grow up to the seven years. With these two, I am just going to brief the empyema because not many things have already been dealt with professor, uh, by Professor Savarya sir. Empyema thoracic definition from the very beginning, uh, from the very beginning to the complication that is pleurisy. It is simply pleuritis, an inflammatory process of pleura caused either by infective organism or by trauma. Simple paranemonic effusion. Though tuberculosis is very much common, but simple paranormal diffusions are also present. We do come across with cases of typhoid, salmonella infection, where the pleural effusion you may get. This is the accumulation of excretive pleural fluid associated with ipsilateral pulmonary infection. Next thing is uncomplicated paranormal effusion, where you don't usually need ICD. Effusions are not infected as well. Complicated paranormal effusion then ICD is masked, sometimes decortication, and these are the patients who fit in the VAT surgery or thoracoscopic decortication surgery. Lastly, the empyematrosis is a really dreadful thing in which most of the time open thoracotomy is necessary. <coughs> Characteristic of pleural fluid, pleural effusion, simple paradigmonic, complicated, and empyema depends on the pH, LDH, glucose, <coughs> and the leukocyte count. The staging. In literature, the stages of empyema ranges from 3 to 9. But I have taken this 5 stages. Initially, from pleuritic sitchi stage, then exudative, then fibrolopulent. Up to this stage, we can go for minimal access surgery. Above that, beyond that, minimal access surgery has no role as such. Then organizational and the chronic form of empyema means the complication of empyema. Pathophysiology, you very well know the pleuritic sitchi stage. It starts from inflammatory process of pulmonary parenchyma, leads to visceral pleura involvement and local pleuritic reaction in the pleuritic chest pain. If there is no effusion, then pleural rub will be there. If pleural effusion, no rub. Exudative stage starts from due to acceleration in the inflammatory process, the production of pro inflammatory cytokines lead to Pleural effusion, at this stage, antibiotic only may suffice, but tube drainage may or may not be required. Fibronopulant stage, this is very crucial. It starts or indicates the increased fluid accumulation and it, is, uh, it begins with the bacterial invasion, which in turn accelerates immune reaction, the migration of neutrophils and activation of coagulation cause cascade lead to decreased fibrinolytic activity and deposition of fibrin over the parietal pleura and the <coughs> somatic pleura, visceral pleura. Organizational stage. Organizational stage where you find thick, thin, fibrous bands all over the chest cavity leading to the honeycomb appearance of the pleural cavity. These are the thoracoscopic picture. These are the two thoracoscopic picture. And the chronic forms of empyma. Chronic forms of empyma means the complication. One is the bronchopleural fistula PPF. We just come across with this thing. Right on the lung abscess, and the worst is empyma resistance, where the spontaneous perforation which takes place through the chest wall. Bacteriology, we don't get 
in routine cases the culture positive, but most common aerobic gram positive isolates are Streptococcus, pneumonia, and aureus. Staph aureus, most common aerobic gram negative isolate is Escherichia coli and Pseudomonas, Haemophilus influenzae, Clepsida. Most common anaerobic isolates are Bacteroids and post Peptostreptococcus. Staph aureus is especially seen in trauma, post operative cases, nosocomial lymphomas, and immunocompromised patients. This is the another important entity which we don't look for that is fungal in pymatholysis because we can we don't have facility for the fungal culture in our city or fungal isolates. But it is most commonly seen in immunocompromised patients where in patients with transplantation, the kidney and liver. I request I request all the members sitting behind. I request all the members sitting behind, please keep quiet because your voices are just disturbing to the persons who are deliberately come here to here to see or to learn something. Please. That is fungal lymphoma, sorry. It is most commonly seen in immunocompromised patients, particularly in renal and liver transplant patients. A renal transplant patient, we have operated. Uh, Dr. Arvind Sir will uh, show you some slides of fungal lymphoma also, fungal balls also. The etiology is nosocomial, abdominal surgery, GI perforation, chest surgery. Most common fungal isolate is candida. Criteria of diagnosis is again the isolation of fungal species, most commonly. And treatment is simply the antifungal, systemic antifungal therapy. And if there is any fungal ball, then no doubt surgery. Tubercular and pymathoriasis, again the big shot. Pleural tuberculosis, second most common extra pulmonary tuberculosis site behind the lymph node involvement. Most commonly seen in neglected and or maltreated tubercular effusions. Pathogenesis, again the same. Clinical feature, most commonly in young age, there is pulmonary tuberculosis, it's not so important. Usually present as an acute illness, one week to one month. Presenting symptom, variety chest pain and non-productive cough. Common to have other symptoms also, night sweats, weight loss, dyspnea. Physical examination, again de decreased breast sound, dullness of percussion as a site of diagnosis. Professor Samari has already told you that is the TB skin test, Montu test, as simple as that. Radiology. Chest X-ray is very, very important. No doubt, CT is excellent, extremely sensitive, but chest X-ray is the main stair, or you can say it is the chief and chief and chief prime important investigation in chest. You cannot overcome this. Microbiology for tuberculosis, culture may or may not be positive. ADS has already told you. Gamma. Plural biopsy again is the most sensitive test where you will get the caseating granuloma in 50 to 97 percent cases. Culture is positive in 40 to 80 percent cases where this facility is available. These are few x rays of tubercular lymphoma treated with wax. That is the this is the pre operative, pre -operative x ray, this is the pre operative CT. You can very well see the CT in which right lung is entrapped and the lymphoma is there and there is a post of chest x-ray. Antimicrobial therapy, ATT, anti-tubercular therapy is the same as for tuberculosis. Again the thing is steroid, steroid have been studied in tubercular pulmonary effusion with no definite benefit. Symptoms, you all know fever, chest pain, cough, expectation, dyspnea, weight loss, weakness. Signs again, anemia. Anemia is a very, very, very important sign. You may not find anything except anemia. Chest coolness, chest deformity, clubbing, discharging the abscesses in case of lymphoma resistance and complications. Sinuses again, lymphoma resistance. Lab investigation is starting from CBC, complete hemogram, to routine blood test. Here, I would emphasize one important test, which is very bigger, that is total serum protein. Dr. Arvind sir has narrated one 
important line, but he skipped that particular word that is the re expansion pulmonary edema. Re expansion pulmonary edema is a very, very fatal complication of thoracic cavity drainage. And I have studied number of articles in which they have emphasized that total serum protein should not be less than 6. If it is less than 6, one should not drain air or fluid in elephant. Drainage should be very slow. So serum protein is very important. We should not go directly in hypoproteinemic patients. Chest X-ray again the upright film and later decubitus. Later decubitus films allow film fluid to shift to the dependent portion of the thoracic cavity, which helps deter, differentiate fluid from pleural thickening fibrosis and subpulmonic effusion as well. These are fluid chest X-rays. These are the loculated effusion, very notorious. To tapping and bind to thoracostomy, therefore treatment should be decided in caution. CT scan is extremely sensitive, helps to view the underlying lung, can distinguish between lung abscess and impina. Ultrasonography again is a highly heavy sensitive test, but in very trained hands, it will differentiate you in loculated and unloculated impyma, the pictures are clearly mentioning the thin septic. The goal or the management of impyma thoracic, goal of the treatment, number one, treat the infection. Treat the infection, number one, drain the purulent diffusion adequately and completely as I said, re-expand the lung to fill the pleural space. Eliminate complication and avoid chronicity. Medical treatment by antibiotic. Antibiotic in impyma definitely should be for the long duration. 10 to 14 days minimum. Continuation oral antibiotic 1 to 3 weeks. I have already told you. And when organism is, this is the second line is very important in our setup. Because large number of patients with impyma we have already receive antibiotics at the time of thoracosynthesis and empiric selection of most appropriate antibiotic is necessary. Surgical treatment is starting from the tube thoracostomy to rib resection, two wax, thoracoscopic drainage, two wax, two formal thoracotomy. These are few x-rays uh, in which I have I did wax in case of impyma, this is the J0. Day 6 and day 50. X-ray clearance in these cases are very late. Don't rely on X-rays only. Day 0, day 30. This is a very important, very unique case in which you will find this triangular pocket. This is the triangular pocket where the CP angle is open. Sorry. CP angle is open. On wax, I operated this pocket which, which was found in the fissures extending from the paritis chest to the left corner of the heart, 36 French tube I put I, to drain the residual debris. Final, after 15 days, chest x-ray is like this, at your right. And my last appeal to myself and to you, don't let it happen. It is the first and worst clinical situation. Thank you.